For decades, Boeing's 737 was untouchable. Then came Airbus with a Challenger, the A320. Equipped with digital systems and a design ahead of its time, it won airlines over. When the NEO upgrade arrived, the edge became undeniable. Airbus had found the single jet family that secured its lead in the aviation world. The story of how one aircraft family shifted global aviation begins with context. In the 1970s and early 1980s, Boeing seemed invincible. The company dominated both long-haul and short-haul markets. The 747 symbolized prestige and global travel, while the 737 grew into the backbone of short-distance routes across the world. Airlines trusted Boeing's engineering, and passengers flew their planes without question. Airbus, by comparison, was a newcomer. Formed in 1970 as a collaboration between European aerospace companies, its early years were uncertain. Its first aircraft, the A300, was a twin-engine widebody that proved efficient but failed to dislodge Boeing's dominance. Airbus needed a single-aisle jet, one that could rival the 737 directly in the most important segment of commercial aviation. That chance came in 1984, when Airbus launched the A320 program. It was more than a new jet, it was a statement. Airbus designed the aircraft to carry around 150 passengers, directly matching the 737. But unlike Boeing, which was content to refine an aging design, Airbus took risks. It equipped the A320 with technology never before seen in commercial aviation. Most significant was fly-by-wire digital control. Instead of heavy mechanical cables linking pilot inputs to control surfaces, the A320 used computers. Pilots flew the aircraft with a side-stick joystick. The system adjusted inputs to keep the jet stable and efficient. Critics saw it as dangerous, too reliant on software, but Airbus believed it was the future. The A320 was also slightly wider than the 737, allowing more comfort in the cabin, another selling point for airlines competing for passengers. When the A320 first flew in 1987, the industry was cautious. Its first deliveries came in 1988 to Air France and Lufthansa, but doubts grew after a demonstration flight ended in disaster at Habsheim, France, when an A320 crashed during a low pass at an air show. The tragedy fueled skepticism about fly-by-wire systems and Airbus's bold new approach. Yet the aircraft itself was not to blame. Investigations showed misjudgments in flight planning and display interpretation. Despite the headlines, Airbus pressed on, determined to prove the A320's worth. Slowly, airlines began to take notice. They saw the benefits in lower operating costs and modern design. Fly-by-wire made flying smoother and reduced maintenance. The slightly wider fuselage meant more flexibility for cabin layouts. By the early 1990s, orders increased and Airbus began to establish credibility. Cracking the American market was critical, and the A320 finally opened that door. US carriers that had long stuck with Boeing began adding Airbus aircraft to their fleets. That shift signaled a turning point. Airbus was no longer a European experiment. It was now a serious competitor on Boeing's home turf. The A320's success grew stronger when Airbus expanded the family. By creating smaller and larger variants, the A318, A319, and A32, the company offered flexibility with a common cockpit. This meant pilots trained on one aircraft could fly any of them. For airlines, that cut training costs, simplified operations, and improved efficiency. The family approach became a powerful advantage, one that Boeing struggled to match with its older 737 lineup. But the real revolution came decades later. By the late 2000s, the aviation industry faced rising fuel prices and increasing environmental pressure. Airlines demanded aircraft that burned less fuel while carrying more passengers farther. Airbus saw an opportunity to strike again. In 2010, it unveiled the A320neo, the new engine option. The changes looked subtle. It was still the same A320 fuselage, but with new engines and aerodynamic tweaks, the NEO consumed up to 20% less fuel than previous models. For airlines operating hundreds of flights per day, that meant millions in savings each year. The response was overwhelming. 
In 2011 alone, Airbus booked more than 1,400 orders, a record for the industry. The deal that made headlines came from American Airlines. For decades, it had been a loyal Boeing customer. But the economics of the A320neo were too strong to ignore. American ordered hundreds, signaling a seismic shift in the market. Airbus had taken Boeing's most reliable customer base and pulled it toward Europe. Boeing was caught off guard. The company debated whether to design a brand new aircraft to compete, but time and money were against them. Instead, Boeing rushed to re-engineer the 737, creating the 737 MAX. On paper, it matched the A320neo's promise of efficiency. In reality, the decision to stretch an older design would become Boeing's most costly mistake. The MAX entered service in 2017, but within two years the program collapsed into crisis. Two fatal crashes in Indonesia and Ethiopia killed 346 people. Investigators traced the issue to a new software system called MCAS, meant to compensate for design changes. Pilots had not been fully trained on the system, and Boeing's rush to market exposed fatal flaws. The entire MAX fleet was grounded worldwide for nearly two years. Boeing's reputation took a massive hit, while airlines scrambled to fill gaps with Airbus deliveries. Airbus, meanwhile, continued building and shipping A320neos without interruption. Airlines that once depended on Boeing placed new orders with Airbus. The Neo became the backbone of fleets worldwide. The timing could not have been worse for Boeing or better for Airbus. The jet family that began as a gamble in the 1980s had now become the standard of global aviation. The numbers told the story. In 2019, the A320 family overtook the 737 in total orders. Since then, Airbus has delivered more planes annually than Boeing. By 2024, Airbus delivered over 760 aircraft, compared to Boeing's 348. Backlogs grew to record levels, with Airbus holding thousands more unfilled orders than its rival. For airlines planning for the next decade, the A320neo was the safer bet. One particular variant became the Star, the A321 new engine option. Larger than the base A320, it could seat up to 244 passengers and fly nearly 4,700 nautical miles. That range opened new routes once reserved for wide-body jets like New York to London or Los Angeles to South America. Boeing's nearest competitor, the 737 MAX 10, did not measure up. It offered fewer seats, shorter range, and had yet to receive certification. Airbus effectively owned that crucial market segment, giving it an edge Boeing could not easily counter. For Airbus, the A320 family was more than a commercial success. It became a symbol of European cooperation, with parts manufactured across Germany, France, Spain, and the United Kingdom before final assembly in Toulouse. Over time, new assembly lines opened in China and the United States, strengthening Airbus's global presence. The Beluga Transporter, a massive cargo aircraft, carried wings and fuselage sections between plants, becoming iconic in its own right. Every detail of the program reflected Airbus's ambition to not just compete, but to dominate. Today, airlines continue to flock to the A320 family. American Airlines, Delta, EasyJet, Indigo, and countless others depend on it daily. The aircraft has logged millions of flights, carrying billions of passengers. Its reliability, efficiency, and comfort have made it the best-selling airliner in history. And with continuing upgrades, its future looks secure well into the 2030s. Boeing remains a formidable player, especially in the wide-body market with jets like the 777 and 787 Dreamliner, and it still has long-standing relationships with major carriers worldwide. Yet in the narrow-body category, the A320's success has clearly given Airbus the lead. Boeing's choice to stretch and re-engineer the 737 instead of developing a brand new single-aisle design continues to haunt the company. Industry observers often point out that the 737 platform first took to the skies in the late 1960s, 
and while it has been updated repeatedly, it now shows its age compared to Airbus's more modern architecture. The setbacks of the 737 MAX deepened this problem, driving airlines to shift orders toward the A320neo and its larger sibling the A321neo. Analysts now argue that Boeing must commit to a completely new aircraft program, one that would restore its credibility in the narrow body space, but they warn such a project may not materialize until the next decade. Until then, Airbus holds a commanding advantage in the segment that generates the bulk of airline profits. The A320 family proves that one jet can shift an entire industry. By introducing technology ahead of its time, offering flexibility through a family of variants, and seizing the moment with the NEO, Airbus managed to topple Boeing from its pedestal. The gamble of the 1980s became the triumph of today. The skies are still shared, but the A320 secured Airbus's edge and rewrote aviation history.